Hello there guys and gals, the Welsh Hunter here back with yet another 100% achievement and trophy guide and this time we are getting everything possible in Observation. A fantastic space adventure slash puzzle game with a thrilling, heartfelt and captivating story. Now the game was developed by No Code, published by Devolver Digital and price wise you can get it for £20.99 but it is is right now available on Xbox Game Pass, so get it while the getting's good. So the main premise of the game is we play as Systems, Administration and Maintenance, or SAM for short, thank god. Um, <laughs> an artificial intelligence software that serves the crew and monitors the whole station. But if you think it could be or sound boring, think again. It's not as easy as just pressing a few buttons and moving on. The game throws great puzzles at you which sort of gets you thinking. We have to know what we are doing in terms of space lingo. And we will be moving about the ship a whole lot as the more we go through the game, the more bad stuff happens on the station as we begin to unravel the mystery. Now there are only 11 achievements in the game, 5 are missable but of course I'll speak up when we get there, but there are a mega 85 collectibles to grab for another achievement on the way. Now I've tried doing the game in the quickest order I could so you guys can still enjoy the story, but of course grabbing all 85 collectibles on the way too. Also I've marked them all down for you in the video to see so you know exactly where you're at as well. Now obviously within the game there is also a lot of dialogue, so I won't be yapping throughout all of it, so you can actually enjoy the story without my, of course, booming, sex, godlike voice. Uh, no, no. So, with that being said then, let us begin. And our first little bit of point of contact will be in the terms of voice authentication. And it's very clever how they do these little things where it's not just sort of automatically handed to you. You've got to do it yourself. I mean, it's still very easy, but very enjoyable. So instead of just... So what we have to do here... So Big Emma will sort of have a voice crackling. You have to click uh, A to analyze and move the left stick all the way to the right. That will analyze her voice. The first time we have to reject, as we cannot hear her properly. So reject that first, and she'll do it again. Come on, try again. Voice authenticate. Yeah, come on, Sam. Jesus Stop Christ, Sam. 140412. So there you go. Analyze it again. Do the waveform. Move the left stick all the way to the right, and then this time accept her, and she will. Be happy, I suppose. Okay, okay. I would be if uh, somebody likes listening to my voice. <laughs> but you guys haven't got a choice. <laughs> Although I suppose you literally could just turn your volume down. Yeah, anyway. So this will be another main game mechanic as well then. So when Emma asks you a question and you're with an object, if you press the left trigger, you can then press the A button with the left trigger button and that will um, enable Sam to give her a response. 
So we'll be using that quite a lot throughout the game. There's quite a few sort of these little game mechanics we'll be using a lot throughout the game, but they're all extremely easy to get used to. Trust me, I've played it. Sam, you seem to have booted up in Module 8. I'm going to relocate you to the Horizon Utility Hub in Module 9. That should give you access to limited system diagnostics. Hang on. Great. Listen, I'm stuck in the Horizon airlock in Module 11. I need to get into 9, but I'm not sure if it's safe to open this hatch door. Can you give me hull and pressure diagnostics on Module 9? So I am very interested in space, but I'm no expert, so apologies if, you know, somebody is an expert and I mess up a whole load of space talk. I do apologize. Um, advanced warning, apologize. So module EAS09, then click the left trigger and then go on to pressure, which is at the top. I mean, it's all basic, you know, at the beginning anyway. She'll ask you to just check things and they are pretty obvious. It does get slightly a little bit more complicated through the games with some of the words she uses. And if you obviously do forget, you can press the left trigger and then press X and she will repeat the last um, bit of dialogue. You should need it if you are following this guide. But um, yeah, you can't really make a mistake to be honest in the game. If you if you pick on if you click something else, she'll just tell you basically to shut the back up and uh, pick the correct one. <laughs> That's basically it. But like I said, as we more as we progress more through the game, of course, the puzzles and everything will get a little bit more complicated. So click on the module EAS 10. The EAS are basically numbers within the station. That's all. If you're wondering what that is, have a look at the hull contact on there. Once again, left trigger and A. Suggesting that module 12 is no longer securely attached to the station. And then go back and enjoy this already sort of intense but quite thrilling cutscene as she starts already losing her mind. Although I don't know, I mean, it, does anyone beat the space? Is this a normal thing to happen? I don't know. I've only seen, I've only played games and watched TV and movies to be honest. But, uh, yeah. The controls aren't responding. See if you can restore power. Sam, you still there? What's going on, Sam? What is that noise? Sam, what is that? Sam, a response! What the hell is going on? I don't care if anyone disagrees with me, spinning around like that sort of all unconscious looks fun. But that's what happens when you drink space whiskey. It's 20 times stronger than normal earth whiskey. And it <laughs> blacks you out. Obviously that's not a thing, I just made it up. But imagine if there was space bread and space whiskey, the diet of legendary astronauts. This isn't good. Sam, run your self-diagnostic procedure. And what errors are you showing? Right then, so now we're running a self-diagnostics thing to see if we're all good, then uh, our AI brain is not all messed up yet. Again, this one's easy, this is as simple as just interacting with buttons, so go ahead, run the network check, and that'll sort of all pop up red. Um, again, press the left trigger and the A button, so if you ever sort of think, what the hell do I press next, it, you know, it's, it's usually you having to press the left trigger to respond to something or someone. Uh, next we're going for the memory core and for this one all you got to do click on the first one and then press the left stick and push it up that's literally it and then go ahead and do it for all of them. 
so like I said, at the minute, it's, it's things which you... I definitely know in other games, you literally all you have to do is click a button and it would sort of do it for you, but little things like you having to do it yourself, I don't know, it just makes it feel a little bit more real. It made me feel like an astronaut. But we're going on the first one, so again, left trigger and A on number one. So it's not looking good for us at the minute. Game will be over now in five minutes because we self-implode. Tamp in. Ah, in you get in. Or gutted, even. Right, and then for the last one, then, we'll be having a look at the tracker. So the tracker implant. So again, it's as simple as interacting, but holding the A button on it. Press and hold the A button on all of them. And that will come up well. The connection between crew tracker functionality and SAM OS has been severed. So it's working, but the link is cut. I'll need to reconnect it in central. Josh? May? Anyone? Shit. Okay. Yeah. I can't get out of here. The hatch controls aren't working. It might be a safety lockdown. You'll have to override the hatch from Module 9. So then, for the first time, we are actually a camera now. And again, this is just a little bit of a uh, little tutorial, sort of how you move. You obviously move with the left stick. You can change camera position depending on how many there are, there are in the room with the D-pad, left or right. So you can go either A, B or C. Sometimes there's two, sometimes there's three. Uh, this will obviously help us in the long run finding items and finding documents and the first two collectibles are actually in this room so there's one on the very right hand wall which is the system link reset the document you zoom in with the right stick zoom in and zoom out with the right stick that's it so that will be your first one and anytime you need a save point um, every collectible saves right there so if your game messes up the game saved, your collectible will be counted, so do not worry about having to go through it. But we need to get all collectibles in one playthrough. Uh, to the left then, you see this laptop, there are a ton of these throughout the entirety of the game. Wait until she finishes talking, press and hold the A button, you'll always have this bit of pairing to do, it's literally just three buttons. Normally simple as hell. So, this is basically just, like I said, the, the little tutorial. And then press the A button on this. And this is our sphere's best practice. That's collectible 2 out of 85. And we've got to pick up documents, audio logs, and quite a few things throughout the game. And if you want to have a look at how many collectibles you've got, it's as easy as pressing the menu button or the start button, you know, the one with three lines, and then scrolling over to uh, data memory. And then in there, that's where you'll see how many collectibles you've got. But we will come to that a little bit later on. So for now, then we'll be going uh, to camera B, switching to uh, going to the hatch control, sorry, and then pressing A to open the door. The schematic we will come to a little bit later on again. We don't need it for now. And then go to camera C and open up the EAS 10 and EAS 11 doors as well. So it's exactly the same. So every time you want to unlock something or get in somewhere, you'll always have to do that tiny little pairing game. But it is quite simple. You can't get it wrong. And if you do, let me know, because I didn't. <laughs> and a, just a quick one then on the collectibles as well, where it said collectible 1 and 2, that is the order that I get them in through the game. And the numbers at the, at the right hand side there, where it said number 46 and number 44, that is the order in which they go in in the data drop memory. So when you press the start button and go over to your memory logs, they're all in sort of completely different orders. But the main important thing is to look at collectible 1 and 2, you know, all the way through up to 85 in the way that I collect them. Otherwise, you just confuse the absolute balls off yourself. Or the old boobs, of course. Balls or boobs. Anyway, there she is. Look at her. Looking all... Well, I mean, she's looking pretty spaced out right now. But a bit of space weed wouldn't uh, go amiss right now, don't you think? That would that would probably soothe her frayed nerves. Or some more of that bloody space whiskey will go down nice. 
What's happening, beautiful? Josh. Oh, so you got a space boyfriend, huh? Pierre. Justin? Anyone? What? Uh, wait a minute, Sam? Our internal communication network is fully online. Where has everyone gone? Shit. Station. Station. Right, Sam. You should have access to your OS now. So, if things couldn't get any worse, a fire has broken out now. Now, this is the start menu then. So, press the start menu. We'll be using this menu quite a lot through the game to get to each room. So, click on EAS 04 to begin with. Then, switch to camera C. And then zoom in and uh, take a look at the fire. If you click in the right stick, it'll tell you your objectives as well, as you just seen very quickly. Uh, go ahead then, press the uh, left trigger and A button. And Emma's like, oh, bruh. Or she's actually more like, shit, I'm on my way. And then you'll see her just starting to climb through the, uh, sort of clamber through the rooms there. So, yeah, so with the start or oh, menu button, whatever the hell you want to call it, we will be using this, our mini map, a lot. So, go to ES06. We're going to need to open up a hatch for her. And, stupid me, I actually opened up the wrong one. It's the one above you, not to the left of you right there. <laughs> we can't even open this one up, so. So again, little things like this is just fantastic. Not everything's open. You've got to be the one that sort of helps her out, I suppose. Otherwise, you'd be a pretty pointless uh, artificial bit of intelligence, really, wouldn't you? Uh, there are, again, plenty of laptops throughout the space station, but there are quite a few that are do that do not count as collectibles. She finally made it to EAS06. So again, me thinking it's the left one when it's actually not. It's the one... You know, because she's actually trying to climb up it right now, and there we go. There we go. We make it eventually look, so. But it's kind of like that, especially when you can actually free roam through the space station. But again, we're going to come to that a little bit later on. Let's not compound your head with loads of crap right now. So again, like I said, still simple stuff at the minute. You know, she's telling you where to go and sort of what to do. So you just follow her exact instructions right now. Again, as I said, throughout the game, it does get a little bit more complicated. And I actually do, do mess it up. So open up the hatch control. She's actually going to count down from three, and then you do it. Nothing happens, but she sort of tells you you're a dick for... Well, she tells me I'm a dick. Just watch. Like you already have the hatch system links. Good. Get ready. Fire suppression override. Dr. Emma Fisher. Okay, Sam. I need you to get ready and open the door. On three. Are you ready? One. What the hell, Sam? On three! Bah! <laughs> Ah, surprise! Yeah, she said count down from three. And I, uh, yeah. You gotta you got keep her on her toes, as if uh, trying to put out a fire isn't enough. But she's put out that out now. We need to get the extract events on. So they are just to the left of you right there. So again, you'll have to do this little tiny pairing up puzzle. Easy as pissing in a toilet, really. And if you're not good at that, then, well, I feel sorry for you. Although then again, being a man, we do we we do tend to miss the uh, toilet quite a lot. Yeah, anyway, just just moving on. So now we have to do a little bit of investigating about what the hell that actually was. So zoom in, press the left trigger button when she stops talking, and then press the A button. Units have been damaged beyond any functional use. Overall, that's not too bad, considering. And then just to the left of it, there you see this little sort of black smudge on it again. Zoom in, left trigger A. Sauce. It was red sauce, bruh. The best kind of sauce. One indicates a potential source. What? That's just a blank plate. Let me see. Something is coming out of 
the side. What is that? It's like a thick grease. Or oil. Dark red. Well, there is maybe something in storage above that's leaking. Oh, come on. What now? Sam, give me a status report. There is significant stress being applied to EAS-12. Immediate separation recommended. Please, if there is anyone in Module 12, make yourself known now. We are about to jettison the module. Someone, please, respond. This is getting much worse. <sighs> okay. Sam, get ready for the separation procedure. First, process my author. So for this next little puzzle then, all you've got to do is copy the code she says, but you have to do it quite quickly as it is an emergency, I suppose. Again, left trigger and then A, that will be the callback code. And now we have to do a bit of detachment, a clamp detachment. So what you have to do then is press A to begin. And where the circle is going around, you have to click up to it and click the A button. But you have to do it quickly, otherwise it sort of resets. So hopefully that wasn't sort of too difficult, and I know that was all sort of quick and sort of in your face, but it is not too bad, sort of, when, when you get used to it and you know what you're doing, it is fine. But that is a successful detachment. Like ripping a condom off. I think we're okay. I'm going to relocate you to the external cameras and see if we can get a better view of the station. Or what's left of it. So we are not quite ready to go outside and for our first space walk. We are still as part of the one as the camera, but uh, look straight up. There's the sort of EAS-12 module. That's sort of, uh, it's just spare parts really at the minute. Tethered with unusual structural damage. It's like a hole has been cut out of it. What would do that? So we're now coming up sort of to the game's ending of the intro and our first achievement. So what we got to do, uh, skip ahead to the third one, uh, pressing the D-pad. All you got to do is just follow what I do, and then you're pressing the left trigger, pressing A to respond, and we're just sort of checking out the damage. And then as soon as all this has ended, we get a cutscene, we get an achievement, and then we can really, really begin the game. Hooray! The CN arm is badly damaged. Oh, God, May. It looks intact, though. I'm going to connect to the distance cam. We should see where we are above Earth and if we've lost any altitude. brought you here it seems what why I don't know Thank you. 
I honestly absolutely loved that intro. That was genuinely spectacular. <laughs> Amazing. And you seen just before the intro kicked on, actually, we are heading to Saturn, where we're not supposed to be heading to Saturn. It's almost like we are being possessed by something. And we're going to find out what we are being sort of uh, possessed by in just a little bit. But Emma doesn't know what's happening. She thinks she's just on course to wherever the hell she's going. Not quite working like that, I'm afraid, honey. So again, we'll just be doing another voice authentication. You can reject her voice, but I don't actually know what happens because I didn't. I just, you're doing the exact same things we've done at the beginning of the game. You analyze it, do the waveform, and then either accept or reject. But I didn't reject, so if anyone wants to reject and tell me what happens, I'd be very grateful. Okay. Okay. So, Sam, here's the deal. I'm stuck in the EAS arm for now. I think it's related to power, but a lot of the hatches are fully locked down, so I'm going to try something different here. Okay. That's audio, at least. Almost there. Just a sec. Shit. That's not it. There we go. Okay, Sam. I have rigged a connection sphere for you to use. You should be able to take control of this and fly around the station. It'll let you reach parts of the station your cameras can't see, and it'll let you wirelessly connect to non-station devices, like laptops. So then, now we can start a free roam around the station in the terms of a sphere. Um, so thank you, Emma. Much appreciated for that. This is kind of difficult to control. Again, the realism on it is fantastic. Because it, I can't even explain it. So you move forward, obviously. That's all good. But there's like, as it is in space, there's like a sort of slow down delay. And it's just brilliant. So you don't just go up to something and you just stop. You sort of got to slow yourself down and start. It can be awkward. And honestly, my driving of this sphere throughout the game is just, it's laughable, really. So a little bit of pre-warning. Nice neck, hun. That's beautiful. Oh. <laughs> it's a nice nose. Real nice. Looks like you take care of your mustache well as well. Space Razor. So again, this is again just a little tutorial. You having to move around. Um, you press the left bumper and right bumper to sort of spin yourself in a circle around as well. Hmm. Nice face. So yeah, if you want to disconnect from the sphere, then you can just press the start slash menu button. And if you want to connect with it again, bottom right hand corner right there, you will see connect sphere. As long as the sort of uh, thing is right, as long as we are sort of buy one. Or if you're actually in the game, you can just press Y to go into it anyway. So there's a few ways. Again, as you see at the bottom right hand corner there, it says switch to module camera. So you can switch to both if you need in a different collectible or for whatever reason. Woo! Make that breath. You need some you need some space toothpaste. I don't know why everything's got to be space. I suppose you're in space, mind. So. The EFR. If that can generate enough power, we can maybe get the universal hatches open. See what you can do. I'll try to find a way to contact the rest of the crew. So then, now we are able to give it a good go. So you see you've got from ES01 to 11. So go to ES02 in the bottom left hand corner there. Press X to put a waypoint down, and now all we're doing is simply following the waypoints. It's basically, again, just to help you really get used to how this game works and you know how you control the how you control this little sphere. Because you know, as I said, with us being in space, it's not as simple as just going up with something and stopping dead. You sort of float 
well, you're floating in you, basically. So, sounds fun, but as I said, my driving is rather laughable, and it disgusts me ever so much. So this is normal here, this will happen. Emma's gonna help us out so we can move on. I think the backup batteries are struggling to cope. Hang on a sec. And then after we get through this door, there will be a locked hat on the right, which Emma once again will help us open up. And this is where we actually get our third collectible now of the game out of 85. So you probably looked at it and gone, half hour with only three collectibles. Is it really? Yeah. These collectibles are going to start coming at you thick and fast like a bunch of penises if you're, you know, in a bukkake session or something. Um, but anyway, you press Y to go <laughs> into the camera. What the hell am I on about? Press Y to go into the camera, then zoom in to the laptop on the right hand side. And this is our third collectible right here. As I said, collectible thread of 85, the number 65 is the data drop memory location. That bit's all random, so don't worry about that. So now this is the first point of the game where we will be using the schematic. So go to the hatch control on the left, just by the door. And then press the X button. Press and hold the X button then. And this will bring up the schematic again. Press and hold the X button, and that will get up the hatch schematic. So the one we are needing for this is L3, which is on the sort of uh, sort of to the right, at the t more towards the top. So you need to copy that exactly. So if you get it wrong, it won't open. So if you get stuck, obviously just have a look, or just copy and see and copy exactly as I do to get through. And once that's open, then press Y to go back into sphere mode after opening the door, of course. Otherwise, you know, it'll just take like 10 more seconds to mess around. And then to the right, we've got another little sort of mini game puzzle to do now. And what we have to do, it, it's sort of like a plasma magnet that we have to align perfectly and get in the center, you will see here. So click the two buttons at the top there. And then what you need to do is, um, with the right stick, Press either up or down until the bit in the middle gets to where the green circle is at the top, as you can see. So I'm pushing up, that'll that'll push the sort of frequency out, and that will make the plasma bit in the in the middle sort of go round the circle. So you need in the plasma bit, plasma magnet bit in the middle to sort of uh, form a circle, if you were. Once that's done, make sure to click the redirect power button at the bottom, and I do apologise, sometimes my explanations do absolutely stink of garbage, and it's probably better if you just sort of copy what I do, you'll, you'll, you'll get it, it's easy enough, I, but for some reason I tend to over explain things, so I do apologise if you think, oh, Jesus Christ, shut up, shut up of your face. But now we're just about to see what it is that is exactly taking over Sam. It's called the Hexagon Entity. And we have to do this four times throughout the game. This is a missable achievement. What, what it will do now is basically flash three sort of patterns at you. And you've got to get those patterns exactly right. Copy it exactly as the Hexagon does. Um, and you've got to do it for all four to get the achievement. If you do sort of mess up, apparently you can just sort of restart it. There's a, there'll be a option of the button to uh, option of the bottom to restart it, and apparently it won't avoid the achievement. So here you go. Then the noise is just thrilling. It's absolutely tense and it's incredible. It gets you really sort of gets your heart going a little bit, to be honest. So there we go then, it'll sort of give us three patterns. I'm not even going to try to explain these patterns, and all you've got to do then is copy it exactly. So if you do sort of mess it mess it up, you've got the clear option, but you can replay it, and apparently that will not void the achievement. 
So as long as you copy the exactly, I mean, you can just copy exactly as I do in the video and pause it and you shouldn't have any issues because it's not random. It'll be the same for everyone all the time. And we'll have to do this three times for each time it appears and that's four times throughout the game. So yeah, just copy the exact same patterns that I do. But again, if you do mess up, you can replay it and it won't void the achievement. Or so I'm told. But just, you know, be careful anyway. why or how you were doing this if you are doing this but i need you to help me sam i need to know what is going on i need the crew so there is that bit then it's not that bad to be honest um it, 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 probably just because of how tense it is you think you might screw up but it's literally just a couple of buttons you've got to push you're just being careful it's easy enough but that achievement which is called an anomaly will come at the very end of the game providing we get all four hexagons correct and copy exactly as we did so now we can start to enter the universal ring so click on module un01 and then again uh, look at the hull contacts which are not looking too good at the minute which is just a damn shame because it's like that throughout the entire game you know we couldn't have got a good space station could we nah they gave us crap are misaligned. That we can fix. I can't get them open from here, but you should be able to reclamp the contact points from outside. Looks like you're going on your first spacewalk, Sam. Before you go outside, though, we need to update your sphere firmware to allow for exterior use. Right then, so press Y to go back into the sphere. We'll be going through the EAS 11 door now. We'll be getting about four collectibles and one of them is the sphere upgrade which will enable us to actually do a spacewalk as in go outside without dying and stuff so there you go emma opens that up for us and then there's a document just to the left of this spacesuit right here and it's four five six and seven so it's the sphere upgrade procedure the upgrade procedure hvca HVCB and Sphere Script Compiler HVC. So they're all three little documents just to the left there. Very easy and happy days. We will also be getting a fifth collectible here, which is the uh, firmware log, which I will show you right now. So as you see at the bottom there, it says data combination now available. Again, there'll be something we'll be doing a lot. So press the start button, go across to the memory info, and you see this sort of flashing little exclamation point. Press X to combine the data, and there it'll say three fragments remaining. You can always tell which ones they are because they'll have a little sort of white light around them. If it doesn't have a, a sort of white circle around them, it's the wrong one, and you can't do anything with it anyway. So press X on each one. That'll sort of connect it up, and that will get you another collectible. So that's already collectible eight then out of 72, and only four, uh, 85, sorry, <laughs> and only 40 minutes in. 
So now we will be going outside for the very first time. And yes, it can be slightly tricky as well. You're just bumping into everything. Um, but I'm again, just, just going back to collectibles. Um, I'm doing this in such an order where we play quite a bit through the story. And then we'll do like a sort of free roam before the... A point of no return, if you want to call it. Basically, in a little, a little bit later on, we'll be going to an alternate station. But if you come back, trying to find these collectibles now would be a lot harder. So, we'll be getting to the point where Emma says we're going to the alternate station, and then we'll grab the rest of collectibles because we'll be grabbing up to 54. So for now, when we go outside, turn directly around. To the right, there is another collectible that is coming up. As you see, this is the EAS-12 sort of module. Um, again, which is just directly behind where you came out. So go through all the debris right here. And then there's a laptop at the end for us to check out. And we will be getting a little achievement here called Searching for Josh. Now, this is a missable achievement, actually, but because we're going for all the collectibles in the game anyway, it intertwines quite perfectly. So, Searching for Josh is literally just for you having a look on the EAS-12 module, that's all. So, that's the first one, the first missable one out of five, so nice and easy. So then, what we'll have to do now is we'll have to uh, find the EAS-3 uh, cl clutch clamps. I don't know why I have such difficulty saying that. But I mean, man, just look at that view. Look at that goddamn planet. And just, I am a sucker for views anyway, but oh, it's just beautiful. I love space. I love the views you get from space. Anyway, what we need, so again, we're looking for EAS 3. Now, I go on to the right here, where, as you can see, it says EAS 5 and EAS 2. What we'll actually be needing to do is going over the EAS 2 module, and the EAS 3 is just behind it. Apologies about the sort of bad edit. I was looking around for about 10 minutes, but literally all it is is over EAS 2, and sort of in the middle of this uh, little bit here, you can see these sort of uh, control clamps right there. Bit of blue. Not hard to miss, to be honest, and this is where we, we will be doing another little um, puzzle. Ah, it's not really a puzzle, so all you have to do then, uh, click number two, start clamp reset, and just do exactly as it tells you. So hold the A button, but you've got to keep holding the A button. So hold A and hold Y at the same time. When it tells you to release Y, release just the Y button, and then release the A button. So that's all it is. So hold I, hold A and Y together, and then Y once, and then A. That's otherwise it'll just sort of go. No, you lose, you lose. Sort of type of I don't know thing. Points are reading true. I think that's working. Yeah, it's working. It's gonna take a few minutes while the module connection runs its pressure checks. So it is actually very easy to get lost out of here, just due to the pure sort of blackness of everything. So it's not as easy as that. So go to this sort of broken solar array right here, and then if you sort of turn around and I can't even really explain it. It's just sort of a ball of what looks like a ball and a little sort of tower building right in front of you. You can then, just as you get closer, you can see the actual solar arrays that we need to uh, press left trigger and interact with. The other ones will not work. They won't actually do it. But it's very tricky to sort of know exactly where you're going. Like I said, just, just due to the pure blackness of it all. So now we've got to go to the China and Russian arms, which is directly in front of you. So this bit, this next bit should be easy. We are almost done with our first spacewalk. So keep heading directly towards you where those solar arrays are. And you can just see a little bit of black on the um, China and Russian arm right there. So that's what you will need to be doing. So left trigger, press A. And it's some sort of weird substance. The same thing that was in the EAS-04, which started the fire. But now we can get out of here. So look up, and then we'll 
we've got low power level, so we ain't out here for long. But uh, press right trigger to boost all the way up. And... Oof, I lucked into that, to be honest. I thought I was going straight flying. <laughs> but there we go. And then uh, grab the uh, airlock controls. Click on them. And then just do exactly the same as you did earlier. But opposite. So there we go then, back in the comfort of the space station, get out the start menu and go to EAS-01 as we will be getting another collectible right now, the experimental fusion reactor. Uh, click ahead, go to camera C and it will be directly in front of you there, the document. So when we have grabbed that, then that's all we're grabbing in that room for now. Go to EAS03. Emma's in here. Coming up to a little cutscene. As you can see, you can see how many memories you've recovered so far. So you should be on 10 already. And just look at them flags. Look at them flags. Wales. Wales. Go on, boys. Come on, the boys. As all females like to say in these Six Nations matches. Um, anyway, get in it. Because Emma Fisher as well. She was actually born in Cardiff. So that's a that's a nice little uh, thing. We'll find out a bit later on. But with the schematic right now, um, I should have really shown you. But it's this, this one is basically just a square. Easy enough to follow. Uh, so again, pressing the D-pad to uh, constantly go round. Sorry, should have probably mentioned that earlier. My bad. And now we're just coming to a cutscene. Here, let me. Hello? Elsa? May? Stas? Where the hell is everyone? Jim? So then, not only have we gained access to the Universal Ring, we've also found our first dead colleague, uh, big Stanislav. Sorry, kid. Uh, with an unexplained death, but first of all, so we've got this new map for the Universal. So what we'll be doing first then is going to UN05, where we make contact with, uh, with me. But there is a missable achievement in here, which you need to get as soon as we come into the Universal Ring. If you... Go ahead with the game with no problems and just carry on. You won't actually... You'll still have access, but the plushie I don't think will be there. Or you, you, you're you not able to interact with it. Something along those lines. 
So as soon as we get into the Universal Ring, come to UN05, you'll have to wait, unfortunately, for this conversation to finish for just a minute. But the plushie is that big Star Wars looking thing. Um, sort of directly, uh, apparently that's a plushie, it just looks like one of those, one of those big giant things from Star Wars, I'm sorry, people, you're gonna slate me, but I've never watched a Star Wars film in my life, <laughs> please do not hate me, but I have not, so anyway, as soon as this, uh, conversation is done, you know, I mean, you can hurry up when you want, mind, press the, uh, left trigger, interact with the plushie, and that will be our second missable achievement. I have found a small copy of me. There are a lot of little stations all over the world, Sam. You're famous. Also, where it just said station alerts online, there's actually three collectibles in EAS 10 we can get before the camera shut down. If you don't get them before, that's fine, don't worry. We will get them a little bit later on, just before we leave to the alternate station. So, if you don't collect them now, don't worry about it, honestly. So, go to UN03, go to camera B. There is the Coolant Network Schematic uh, Collectible. That is 11 out of 85. And there's uh, Collectible 12 and 13. Turn on the Power Caddy right next to it. That will immediately turn the laptop on. And that will be uh, Collectible 12 and 13. Hey Sam, message for Emma. Hey, it's me. Good news is Jim finally pulled me off USES reactor tests as Houston want the EFR on standby tomorrow. So, out of nowhere, the captain gave us a window between shifts, meaning we get to be awake at the same time for once. New restaurant just opened called EAS 12. So then we can press start, go to your memory core again. We'll be doing a little bit of combination data for the actual coolant network schematic so again the flashing orange press x to combine the data and only choose the ones with the white bright lights around them it's nice and easy right Uh, next, a Rooney, we're going back to UC01, where we'll pick up another three collectibles. If you go to camera B, there is a laptop on the left-hand side. And, yep, yeah, once again, do the exact same thing. Little pair game, and then just uh, make sure to click on all three collectibles. That's 15, 16, and 17. And again, if you just want to keep making sure you're on the same path, have a look at your memory data, your data drops on, on the start menu. Make sure you'll have 17 afterwards. Have you been getting your head up about requests from Houston and from me that have been butting into your work this past week? So just wait until uh, Jim sort of stops talking and Emma will sort of start the next bit of story dialogue. You don't have to do what I do here. I'm literally doing it because there's nothing else to do for a minute. This literally has no bearing doing the life support and the uh, next thing I do. We're just waiting for end dogs. So now we ha need to have a look at the station alert. So start, click the second box there on station alerts and then cool. press the left trigger and interact with it and we get a little bit of dialogue here. And investigation. I hope you give us problems later on. Have a look at the network hub, please, Sam. But now we will be turning on all of the coolant networks. So go to UN03. Again, if you uh, need these collectibles, they are right there, the laptop and the uh, original coolant network schematic. Otherwise, go to camera A, and it's just at the top, uh, sort of uh, left to the link B door right there. Do the little pair and up game. And then all we've got to do is uh, turn on the uh, schematic. So again, press and hold X. And you can either sort of try and figure and work it out yourself, or you can literally just copy exactly what I do and <laughs> do it the quicker way for you guys.
can see the light in here flashing. It's checking the system again. Whatever you're doing, keep going. So then, now they've all been switched on, to the left of that final one there is the Coolant Network Hub. That's why I did it in that order, so we're not totally pissing about there. Again, do another little pairing game, and this... This is easy, this isn't uh, really a puzzle or a game or anything. Uh, press the start button to the left hand side, go on coolant network mode, and then just click the top one, press start, all you gotta do then is just do it for all three of them. Doesn't really matter what order you do it in, as you can see, I almost messed that up. So just doing that for the three first. And then press confirm again, so that bit, and now we can just get the cool running. So press initiate, hub controller, confirm, jobs are good and mate. Good job, Sam. That will allow us or anyone else access to the Universal Modules 3 and 4 as well as the Shenzo arm. Yeah. Still not opening. Oh, the lockdown hasn't lifted. Now saying something about contact points. We had the same problem on the EAS arm. I think whatever moved us to Saturn caused us to shake. Wait, what? Saturn? Yeah. Sorry, I should have mentioned that. I'd say it's a long story, but all I know is that Sam thinks he brought us here. Shit! Saturn? I mean... Christ, I don't know where to begin. Look, I'll, I'll head outside and try to get this sorted. I still have my suit and plenty of O2. Be careful, May. I'll be fine, Emma. Don't worry. I really, really wish they would have made May's second name James. That would have just been a whole lot better. James May and May James. Captain Slow and Captain Slow in Space. Missed a trick with that, the Devolver Digital and no code, but that's okay, I'll forgive you. So then, we're not going to CN01 for the moment. If you want to choose between the Russian and Chinese arms and uh, the Euro arms, you've just got to click left and right on the D-pad. And there we go, that's, it's as simple as that. So we will be going to UN01, we'll be setting up the crew tracking sensors now. And... Again, these bits of puzzles are very easy enough. So again, you'll be doing the pairing game. Click on the... I mean, this is definitely... This is very 1998. This is Windows 98 style stuff, this. You think they do a little bit better. But click the button on the right and then adjust the sensor by pushing it all the way up. And then click the left button right there and click start. And all you've got to do is just click on all of the buttons which are red. So the left hand side square, they are, yeah, just click the buttons that all are red. It'll be random for you guys, but you know, it's it's not anything. The, the color will be different. So sadly, I mean, if you're extremely colorblind, you might have to get somebody else to help you out, I'm afraid. Sorry. <laughs> That's sensor 2 online now as well. Nearly there.
That's them all online now. I'm almost done here, thanks to you. And with doing that third one then, that brings the crew tracker online. So uh, take a little look at the um, power caddy on the right hand side. We're actually coming up to another collectible while we're here. Might as well grab it while we're here. So yes, now Sam's starting to feel a little bit more like himself, which is just great. So we get the 18th collectible out of 85. Confirming that I'm finally powering down the test cycle on the EFR reactor. I know I've been a pain in the ass about this gym, but it's been operational. Now, I'm not sure if you have to wait for this to finish before you can actually move on, because we'll be going to the crew tracker next. And we need to find out all the vital signs and everything, so click on Jim Elias first, old Captain Jim Bob. I mean, to be honest, he already looks like that type of... You know, that's just like that weird villain who has like a, a weird sex life and stuff like that in all the programs. Yeah, just it's one of them weirdos. And you just you look at him and you think he's not going to be a good guy. Anyway, just do as Emma says. She'll ask you to sort of check his vitals and check uh, where he is, etc. So do that. And we'll also be doing the same for Josh Roman Noodles. Or Josh Ramon. Oh, ramen? Ramen noodles, ramen noodles. <laughs> ah, that's the one. Josh Ramen Noodles. We'll have to do the same for next. Okay, what about Josh? Please tell me you have something on him. The tracker for Josh Ramon is showing a weak connection. Can we get a position on him? Is there any biomedical data showing? The location of Josh Ramon is unknown. Is there any sensible data coming through for him? There is no biomedical data being received for Josh Ramon. I don't understand. Maybe there is some interference. May! We've got a fix on Jim. He's in the salute somewhere. Good. Get him to sort this mess out. Tell him he owes me an explanation. So then, our next job would be to go uh, to the Russian arm now and try and find Big Jim, but what we're actually going to be doing is skipping around the ship and just grabbing a few more collectibles first. There is no there is no point of no return per se on this sort of first part of the ship, but you know, it's always better to try and grab as many collectibles as we can so we're not having to rush about later. Because I'm nice like that. And because we don't really want to be rushing about, do we? So go to EAS01 first, and on the left there's a document on the wall just behind the laptop, and that is the experiment order number 244. That's collectible 19 out of 85 now. Next, go to EAS03. Hopefully by now you should start having a bit, a bit of a clue about how the map works and everything. But go to camera B, there's a laptop just in the sort of doorway there, and that is collectible 20. Message from home, please, Sam. Hey guys, it's like 4 a.m. with you. We just went by Florida and I saw Jacksonville all lit up. And it never gets old. And, well, I just wanted to say hey. Things are great up here and work is going smoothly. Although Houston keeps changing their minds. On Next again, we're going to. I don't know what the hell I'm shouting for, but we're going to EAS05. Uh, camera E, snip to the left just a little bit, and you will find the first collectible out of three in this room, which is the Crew Tracker Emergency Protocol. And then just below it, then, there is the second out of three collectibles in EAS, EAS05. It's a lot easier to say EAS. The uh, <laughs> RMS data log, anyway. EAS? EAS? I don't know, EAS just sounds funnier, doesn't it? But there you go, that should be collectible 22 out of uh, 85. I've had a long night, by the way, so I'm really just <clears throat> today. Uh, go to camera B, and there's a laptop there for collectible 23. And that is that for the time being. We'll carry on collecting collectibles and come back. Now, I tried to go to EAS 10. Sadly for us, the camera is offline. So, like I said, you could have got these ones a little bit earlier on, but it doesn't matter because we will get them at the very end before we go into the alternate station. So, don't worry about that. Um, so, what we're doing is just carrying on with the stories uh, for now. So, go into RUS 04. 
and basically we'll go into station alerts now and just pick the first square and then inform the crew. And I think that was the only thing with the collectibles in this game. They're very clever, but you get so far ahead with the story. There were many times where I thought, shit, I better get the collectibles before I uh, crack on. Um, yeah, so there we go then. We are into RUS 06 now. Jim Elias is pretty... I mean, he looks pretty dead. You know, unless he's taking a goddamn long space noop. But he's definitely dead. But we've got a few more collectibles anyway, so don't worry about the dead guy for now. He, he ain't gonna come back as a zombie, hopefully. Uh, <laughs> look at the laptop on camera C, and we've got two collectibles to collect in here. The pin code, by the way, is on the back of the laptop, 9338. But if you want to know where it is, it was literally pinned on the back of the laptop, so just go ahead and grab these. Message from crew. Whatever happens next, thank you. All of you. I don't mean to be cryptic. Sorry. So once we're done, sort of, we're, we're not focusing in on the dead guy. <laughs> not yet, you creepy ass. But there is a hatch control. Unless you're into that stuff, of course. I don't judge. I've never judged anyone in my life except for those that love dead people. Uh, <laughs> hold X to go into your hatch schematic. We're going for the L3 in the top left corner there, so copy that exact pattern. And then watch the ensuing cutscene where Emma's like, Bruh, why is everyone dead? Sam out to you, he can wirelessly connect. There's another sphere in RUS02 next to the airlock. Use that. So very shortly we will be doing another spacewalk, but for now press the start button, connect your sphere so you can get in there. And, you know, no rush, Jim's dead, May's just hanging outside, you know, potentially could be dead soon as well. Um, you know, in case something bad happens. But we'll just get a collectible first. You know, no rush. Take your time. Everyone's happy to sort of hang about, apparently. The response to Elsa. I am sorry, Elsa, but I cannot help with the survey data. The captain has all my time. He's even broken protocol to delay my sleep cycle for some space janitor. So into the airlock we go again. We're going to go outside and breathe in that lovely death-defining space air. Also, by the way, if you didn't get that collectible from that broken EAS-12 module earlier, data drop 15, this is the last time that you will be able to get this. Like I said, if you've been following along the video, you would have got it earlier on anyway, the first time we went outside. But um, I think there was collectible number 9. Um, but yeah, you should be good to go. So now we are going to be trying to find May May, May James. Uh, Space Captain Slow, she's around here somewhere. The, um, yeah, I, I, there she is, she's directly in front of you. So I'll just look down from where you start and to the left a bit and there she is. Um, you have to sort of actually go up to her to get the cutscene to get rolling, which I thought wasn't working for whatever reason. I thought it glitched, to be honest, at this point, so I was about to lose my cue slightly. But no, just go up to her to get the uh, her talking. For the for now, and and Sam looks like a big giant titty there, doesn't it? To be honest, but hey, that that that's up to you whether you want to decide that. So basically, we need to go to 
the um, as she said there, big big M, big fish like. We need to be going to the hull contact point, which is literally, literally just under the solar arrays right there. It's sort of tricky to sort of see because it's just underneath the station. And again, I apologise for this bit of editing right here, but you see this. What looks like a cigarette sign or something is one of the hull contacts. That is exactly where I am. So I haven't like gone anywhere else, but the hull contact point is literally just underneath that. Can be kind of difficult to spot, but it's exactly the same thing as we were doing earlier. So it's hold and press Y at the same time when instructed, then release Y, then release A. so I can update her. She should be able to access Shenzo again. So that's job done for that. All we've got to do now is return to May, and somehow I end up making a big hash out of this. But remember, just move up and then go to the left a little bit. That's all you've got to do. Remember that. Go at the top of where the solar array panels are right here, and she is there. But for some reason, I make quite a, a meal out of this. So apologies. <laughs> apologies for that. I'm not getting straight to it. I, I don't know why, the, <laughs> there she is, like right in Sans nipple view. So go up to her and then a cutscene will begin. There we go, she's saved, happy days. Hey. Sam sorted it out. You can get back inside and meet me in Universal now. Okay, okay, I much prefer that option. Sam seems to think, May, the storm. You're breaking up. I'm heading back to CN3. I'll be with you soon. Sam, you seeing this? May, get back inside now. The storm on the planet is... Hey Sam, I got you in another sphere. I don't know what just happened, but I feel... I feel like I've changed. And that's not the only thing to have changed. Take a look. Someone is coming to get us, Sam. I'm not sure how much of this I can take. They're just hanging there. Well, UC2 is pressurizing just now. Let's try to contact them in the meantime. Assuming they aren't all dead. Look, I know this makes no sense. And you'll probably just give me some broken response. I am here, Emma. <sighs> yeah. Yeah, you are, aren't you? One more time, Sam. Voice authenticate. Emma Fisher. One four zero four one two. Oh, never mind. Why do I 
feel like you're going to help me anyway. We're online. Okay, let's see. Well, we still have some work to do if we want to speak to anyone. External comms looks good, but the array is facing the wrong way. So, looks like to get a signal out, we are going to need two things. First, we need to adjust the array to target the other station's relative position from ours. And the astrophysics lab may have some answer to that. Secondly, our broadcasts won't go anywhere without the captain's authorization code. I'm guessing we can find that in his personal module, EAS-7. Let me know what the authorization code is so that I can enter it into the system. You will need to set up the comms array yourself, though. If there are any new station alerts, be sure to let me know. I may be able to action some repairs now. Oh, did I say saved? Sorry, I meant Saturn's nipple, um, the storm, nipple storm destroyed her. Sorry, uh, I didn't mean to get your hopes up like that, I'm afraid. Uh, but we need to be going to ESO 7, so inform Emma of that. Yes, I know, I'm sorry. But it's obviously going to be one of those those games. I'm not going to say which, I'm not going to say what. But, you know, keep playing and woof. It's going to get a lot more twisted and complicated. But anyway, when we are in EASO 7, look to the right slightly to see the um, weird sex villains graduation photo and then go into camera B and get the laptop up and running and the code is 2008 uh, easily click on precursor one again there's a little note with the uh, pin code on it just to the right or left I think or literally on it uh, to the right a little bit you'll find another document the marker observations as well That's the auth code in. From there, turn slightly left to the other laptop. That'll get us collectible 29. See, they come they come at us thick and fast like a punch in the face. Or something else that comes fast in your face. <laughs> oh, that means two things, but I actually didn't mean to say that this time. It's the mind it goes into, not the mouth it comes out of. Anyway, <laughs> once we're done from there, go into camera C. And we're going to have to wait for him to just uh, finish yapping for just a sec. Just a sec. Although I do hope you're actually watching and listening because the story is just insanely good. Absolutely fantastic. All these audio logs. This is definitely worth doing. But once we're done with that then, uh, go into RUS04 and we're going to have our second hexagon. And just remember you've got to get all the answers exactly extremely right. Remember, they're not random, so they should be the same as on your you guys' gameplay. So just follow along, and you shouldn't have an issue. Again, I'm not going to try and... Like, what am I supposed to say? A couple of squares with circles around it. A right-hand flag. Um, a circle down circle thing. Nah, just copy and you'll be fine. Okay. <laughs>
So, now that that random pleasantness, I find it pleasant, so intense, that sort of hexagon stuff, I literally, I do, <laughs> I love it. Go ahead, turn on the near field and the far field servers right there, turn them both on, and then uh, interact with the screen just to the uh, left of it there, so we'll do the pairing up game again. That literally just comes, you do it so much, it just comes second nature now too, to be honest. Like, taking the piss in the woods. Take an apis in the woods, even. Click the left bumper, which will go for the near field online. It can't be far, it has to be near. And then just to the right, you'll see this little sort of dark patch. And that is the code that right there. Press A, 16, 14, 22, 48, 11, 11. That's the code we need. Press the A button and then press B to disconnect. Now we can go into the start menu. Because we're going to the start menu. Go left. Onto communication, click the broadcasting option right there, and then just click exactly the same as you see right there, 16, 14, 22, 48, 11, 11. Fill that in, and then watch the madness ensue in a cutscene right in front of your eyes. Oh, after doing this little bit where you click on E Fisher, because that's who we're looking at, select, uh, make sure to get both boxes checked there with the little white marks in them, and then click broadcast. Now watch the madness ensue in front of your eyes. <laughs> Got us back in business. Hello, Captain. Hello, Captain. Hello, Captain. This is Emma Fisher on board Observation. Please respond. This is Observation. I have visual. Please respond. If you can hear me, please let me know in some way. It's, um, it's just me left and Sam. I'm not sure how we ended up here. There was a massive power outage, some noise, and then we ended up here. I'm assuming you know all this if you're here to pick us up. Repeat, this is Emma Fisher on board observation. Please respond. Okay, so I lied, it wasn't that mad because nobody's responding, but still, it's going to get madder, trust me. Just as soon as you get to that alternate station. But we've got a few collectibles coming up now, so go back onto communications, and pretty soon, there it is, incoming message received. So go onto incoming messages, and then just click on the two messages there for now. These are story related and unmissable anyway, but I'll put them in for you so you know where we're at. And now the game is going to start getting just a touch weirder. This is where the weird stuff starts to happen. And once that's done, then just skip over to your memory core. You see the little flashing orange symbol. Just um, go ahead, combine the data by pressing X, again, with only with the ones that have these sort of white light around them, so you know exactly which ones they are. Press X to combine them both, and that gets us the cleaned audio message from Josh Ramen Noodle. This is Josh Ramon on board the... I don't know where I am. Oh my god, it's Josh! I'm in Chinese He's alive! How is he? If you can hear me. He got to the other station. Another station. He's trying to. Wake him up. Please. I knew he wasn't dead. I just knew it. I guess he must have made it across after we saw May. When the rescue station arrived. So this is now extremely importante. So basically, Emma has now found out. We found out that Josh is alive on the alternate station. 
that's where we would be heading next, but what we're actually going to be doing is getting the rest of the collectibles up to 54 on this first part, because trust me, it's just way easier. So, first of all, go to UN02. Basically, we can still get the collectibles after if we did go into the alternate station now, but trust me, it would be a whole lot harder later on. It's just so much easier to get them out the way now. So we'll be going, what are we on? 32, so we'll just grab the rest of the 22. So go ahead, turn the laptop on. The power caddy is to the left of it. But it is important that as soon as we're at this point of the game, which goes right, we're off to the alternate station. Again, follow me, but grab the rest of the collectibles first. Trust me, it's just so much easier this way. Imagery from the coordinates you requested for days now. Sam's hard drive is filling up with pictures of blank space, and Ailes is too polite to say, but she's pissed the rotations are interfering with her climate work. She needs the scope as much as you do. Or and from the laptop, turn to your right just a little bit to find Captain Spacewalk Slow's photograph there, with Big Jim, the uh, sex pervert. Someone far less qualified could do this work. So what haven't you told me? What am I looking for? Keep me in the loop, Jim. Messages. And moving on from here, where we can go now is UN04. Let's go ahead, nip your ass on over there, float your way over there like a nice floaty boy. Uh, have a look directly in front of you. This next laptop does have a code, and it's right there directly in front of you there. So, uh, 2491, I think that was. So, go to camera B, laptops again directly in front of you, very hard to miss. Do up your pair in pair pairs. And then just enter the code as you've seen, which again was 2491. Message for home, Sam. Hey, it's me. Still up here. Still counting down the days to see you again. It's and immediately from here, you just turn to your right and down a little bit, you'll, you'll find the document landmark Research on Observation. And now we've got to go to UN05, which is where we found the plushie for the achievement earlier on. Um, but I think, I'm pretty sure if you got this far without actually interacting with the plushie, you wouldn't actually be able to at this point. Therefore missing the achievement, and therefore you'd have to restart the game. Um, but we are back here, go to camera B, and to the left there is another document, the Sphere Experiment Notes. And again, I just found it easier to sort of nip through the game and get some collectibles as we go, and then the rest then shouldn't really take us too long, to be honest. So that's why I've done it. It's sort of in the best order that I could put it, rather than barely pick up any and then go through a boring, you know, hour, hour and a half grind at the end there. Um, but sticking with C, looking up to the right, you can just about see a laptop off in the corner, and that is yet another collectible for us to grab. So that should be now 38 out of 85. I was getting And sticking with the goodness of the UN, next it's UN07, that's where we'll nip off, just to the right you can see a laptop, you can either click on, you can either interact with the laptop or you can actually turn the power caddy on, do the pairing game and the laptop will come on automatically, so if you want to save yourself literally about 0.2 seconds, well, there it is, <laughs> that's the greatest advice for, uh, for speed I can give you. And we're not quite done here yet, turn to camera B, and then on the left hand side of the wall there, there is uh, Jim Elias's biomedical results. So it's just at the top, it will be right at the top, but it can be a little bit tricky to find. But make sure to grab that, that should be collectible 40 out of 85 now. See collectible starting to fly at us now, no space pun intended. Okay, it was a little bit intended. Anyway, we will be going to ULA next, the Universal Shared Structural Ring. So go to ULA, there's only two cameras in here, go to camera B, and there's another laptop on the right. And this is what I mean, again, this is the, just the easiest way I've found. The less collectibles we can sort of grind out before we move on, obviously the better. Just works out well for everyone, we've only got 13 left to get after this one. 
It's not just your imagination. This isn't gossip, either. We just want what's best for them and what's least disruptive to observation. I'll go to Jim with Elsa. That's all, folks, from the Universal Ring. Now we go to the Russian Space Agency arm. And the first one we go to is RUS-02, where we got in the sphere for the second spacewalk earlier on. Go to camera C, and on the right-hand side, there is the Stanislav sketch for collectible 42. So we are getting closer to the end of the sort of free roaming collectibles anyway, the sort of big chunk of it. But we're going into RUS03 now, go to camera C, have a look at the Toru or Toru remote viewer. Go ahead, get in there for the Toru data log. And from said data log, if you look up just to your right a little bit, you can see a laptop there. Um, it's one that we'll have to turn on with the power caddy from... I don't know why I've done it from here. I could have probably made it easier with myself. Go into camera B. But it is around there somewhere. Yeah, it's sort of... It's, it's tricky to find. You might find it easier going to camera A or camera B and doing it that way. For some reason, I like making life difficult for myself. It's sort of like a big challenge, except... It, Gets annoying after about ten minutes. I my station at request of the captain, so the doctor duties you like so much must wait. I'm afraid. I'm wondering if you can help me. With Next up, we're going to RUS04, where we beat the uh, second hexagon earlier on. Switch the camera B. Look to the left, and there is another document on the wall for us to grab. Um, which again, I mean, if you're listening to the audio logs as well at the same time, but. Like I said, it's worth listening to all the audio logs, reading all these, because it's very interesting. But, with this being a 100% guide, I'm just sort of trying to smash through it. Which is so wrong. But, from there then, where we're off next is to... Now we're going to RUS05. And as you can see, directly on your right, there is another laptop. The power caddy is just to the left on the wall. Go ahead, pair that up, switch that on. There's another bad boy. <coughs> bad boy. Imagine calling a collectible a bad boy. <laughs> Message for Jim, please, Sam. Hey, Jim. I didn't want to say it out loud in front of everyone, but Emma and Josh are pretty tight these days, and I'm thinking I should move sleep station. Next up, then, we're heading to the Chinese arm, the Shenzhou 12? My, I really am not very good at Roman numerals. X, X I, I is, is 12, isn't it? Yeah, see, I told you I was smart. Uh, but anyway, CN01, smart boy. I know my stuff. I look at the clock now and again. Uh, directly on your right in CN01, turn it on with the power caddy. Job done. That's 47 out of 85. We're coming up to the end now in this particular spatial station. Message for the Chinese Climate Initiative. We are Houston, Sam. Elsa Yang on board observation here. And from here then we're going to be heading to CN02. And then if you look directly on your right, which is basically on a wall straight in front of you, is the climatology thesis, which is another document. I said before, but it bears repeating. If any unexpected delegates sign up, I can make myself available for translation. And then do yourself a favor, turn around. If you want to get collectible 49, that is. <laughs> so, go to camera B, and again, just to the right of the sort of door-looking thing, there's a CN hatch schematic. And then for collectible 50, we're going into our memory core again. We'll be doing a little bit of combination data ring. You should know how to sort of do it by now. Fl look for the orange flash. Press X, have a look at the white circles around it. You know exactly what you're doing. You guys got this. But this one is for the Loss CN arm. And we've only got 
four left to go before we can continue with the story and jump to the alternate ship. But first, we're just going to head back to EAS 07 because uh, oh, I forgot we were here earlier, but I forgot to go to camera C. That's where we're going. I forgot to pick up the Melfi unit log. So, you know, just a little slight backtracking. Literally slight. It'll take th less than 30 seconds if I know where it is. <laughs> but it is camera C and it is to the left. And there is Melfi unit. That's 51 out of 54. So now we're finally onto the final three, so head to EAS 09, uh, switch to your local sphere by pressing the Y button and then go straight ahead into EAS 010 and look up. That's the EMU calibration unit right there. And remember I said I did say a little bit earlier on that if the cameras had gone offline in EAS 010, if we'd gone a little bit too far in the story, again, it doesn't matter because we can get them at the end right here. So happy days. I think everyone's happy. And apologies, I've got a bit of a croaky voice. I think I'm on the verge of um, uh, COVID or something. <coughs> no, I'm joking. Uh, but anyway, there's a laptop directly in front of us. Let's turn on the power caddy first. There we go. Power caddy sounds like a sounds like an Irishman, doesn't it? Turn on the power caddy. Oh man, I gotta stop with these friggin' accents in videos. <laughs> but here we go, 53 and 54. <laughs> So make sure before you leave now, before you carry on with the story going to the alternate station, just make sure, for the love of God, you have 54 out of 85 collectibles. Make sure you got them. Um, if not, obviously it'll all be in the timestamps below anyway if you are missing one with all the data drops and things. So it shouldn't be too hard to figure out what you're missing. But before you move on, just make sure. Because I don't want you to have to go through all this again, to be honest. Because if you do end up missing one and you don't get the achievement, you will have to go through the entire game again. So, yeah, that's a pain in the butthole right there. And we've all had pain in the buttholes and we know it's not pleasant. But that's it then. Yes, 54 of 85 collectibles. The rest of the collectibles are not as bad, to be honest. They're sort of as you're going through the story, so it is not bad now. But now we will go to EAS 11. And normally, I'm taking my time here because normally Emma should sort of pop her head through and come through right now. But I think, I don't know what the hell happened to her. But that's fine. So if she, you know, it says that she is there, but she's not. She's sort of floating somewhere. But if she doesn't pop out, just go ahead, do the airlock controls and everything anyway. And then a, a cutscene automatically happens and she'll pop straight back through. So <laughs> I, don't, I don't know where the hell she went. Literally, that's why I'm just having a little pop out. No, see if see if a see if a big old ass got stuck in anything, or a big old that big old astronaut head. But since we can't find her, like I said, you know, if that does happen, it literally doesn't matter. You can just carry on, carry on as normal. Cutting will happen, and we will be on the alternate station where these collectibles are. Mo they are important to get. In the order I get them in, because there are around five points of no returns on it. So, very important you follow exactly what I do on this station. This is only my second time outside the station. And now I have two stations. Talk about jumping off into the deep end. Okay. That's us tethered together for the jump. If I start to drift, you can try to course correct in the sphere. I'm not sure the science is spot on, but... It's better than nothing. You can be my anchor. Oh, okay. Here goes. Oh my god, what am I doing? What am I doing? What am I doing? What am I doing? Oh god. 
There goes Emma Fisher with those mad Premier League goalkeeping standards. So, you know, she saved herself so she didn't die. Good effort, that was, kid. Good effort. But here we are then, on the alternate station. And if you've been following the story, which I hope you have, because honestly, it's, it is just absolutely fantastic. This is where things start to unravel and get a whole, whole lot weirder. I mean... Honestly, this game is so fantastically well written. I just, I'm, I'm not even going to say anything. You, you just have to follow, you, you'll just have to follow and, you know, have your own mind blown. Because I did. I thought it was absolutely fantastic. But, yep, yeah, like I said, we are on the alternate station now. As for collectibles, these, again, are not too bad. Um, we're just going along with the story. We don't have a map either, so... We can't just free roam about the place like we did on the other station, so make sure to be following me pretty much exactly. I'll obviously try and explain where we're going as we're going along, but Emma's going to open this up for her first with their massive astronaut biceps. These hatches are not connected to my system links. Of course, sorry. Just hang on, I'll try to budge them. And first things first then, as we squeeze through the tight hole, dry with no lube, uh, turn to the right from this point and there will be a laptop on the floor. My driving, my driving of the sphere gets extremely progressively worse throughout the game, so, <laughs> you know, that's my bad. I had already recovered the data at this point, but my game crashed, which was pissing annoying, so that's why uh, I had to edit it a little bit there. Um, at these collectibles as well, this is kind of a sh the, the shortest section of the game. Uh, I think there's about 14 we've got to collect. So these collectibles come at you, you know, proper penis bukkake style. I, why, why am I using that as an analogy? Uh, but they come at you pretty thick and fast. That's making me sound a bit fruity. Anyway. So, uh, <laughs> good God, man. Good God. From the laptop, turn directly around. Uh, that helmet's part of the story. You don't need to worry about that. I just thought we'd get that out of the way quickly. Then go straight ahead, and there is another laptop in here, in this little um, dense room for us to collect. Which this spa uh, this station obviously looks... It is exactly the same as the original one we were just on. So it's very um, interesting. But this... There is a code that we need to collect. It's on a table just below it. Now... The standard of driving of this sphere it gets pretty bad because you sort of you'll go into a room and you don't know whether the hell you're upside down, left, right, or whether you're the right way up. It's it's literally it can get a bit confusing sometimes. So that's why my driving is pretty poor. But you you <laughs> you'll learn to live with it and you will learn to cope. So shouldn't be a problem. So there was the code then on the table. So go ahead, smash up the laptop then, one, nine, four, two, and then we've got collectible 56 out of 85. So once we've done with this, we'll head back through the door and we're going through a door which has Link B on it. 
and this is what I mean now. This you you may end up sort of to the right, to the left, upside down, or whatever. Um, so it may get a bit disorientating and may be a bit confusing sometimes. But as long as you're just copying what I do, going through the same doors that I do, you shouldn't have too much of an issue at all. So uh, get Emma to open up Link B. Sounds like another crappy boy band name, to be honest, that these days, isn't it? But as long as you picked up Memories 10 and 26 like we just did then, that's great because as soon as you get to the next point of the story, this is a point of no return. This is the first point of no return on the alternate station, so make sure to grab those two collectibles before you move on. Woo! Look at that ass. Look at that ass. Mm, 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 mm. Oh, damn. Honey, you gotta lay off the space bread. Lay off that space bread. I can smell what you have for breakfast. And you're probably shitting yourself being on this station as well, which doesn't help. Just, just change your pants when we get back. Change your suit when we get back, right, hon? Thanks. Anyway, she opens the door for us. Lovely. That's not a collectible. So don't worry about that laptop. But this is the uh, same center station, the uh, ULC or uh, the Universal Center Ring. That was on the original space station. Like I said, it's exactly the same as the other station we were on. Uh, but to move the, you, to collect this laptop, then you just need to go into the room a little bit more. That's all. You can't actually... This is an automatic uh, collectible. But you've actually got to come into the room a bit more so Emma will, you know, pop her head through and take a little look. Which is why she's not collecting it now. Go back, go back, go back, go back, go back. There she is. I mean, she can see it from there. Why did I have to move back for? You're not too blind, do you? But anyway, like I said, this is an automatic collectible. And, pff, well, this, this is a laptop to freaky. It's not mine, Sam. Get it here. So there we have it then, there is an alternate Dr. Emma Fisher apparently somewhere on this ship. Now we've seen someone and we're gonna be chasing after them. I know what the hell, but it gets so interesting. Now this is where, as we're chasing after this random assailant, this is where the uh, collectibles are gonna be coming at us faster than Japan's bullet speed train. And the first one is to the left, and that is collectible 58, get some online. Was that a little better analogy than the old, um, hmm. Penis one? <clears throat> or was it a bit boring? I'll just let you be the judge of that. I'll make up some better ones as well. So anyway, once we get that one from the left, we can now carry on to follow Emma. Just through the door. Probably not the door you were expecting there. I <laughs> literally, that's how it is. You can literally pop up to the left, pop up to the right. But in this next little room, we'll get collectible 59, which is the Josh injured audio log. So go ahead and pick that up just on the top there. I just saw Josh. He's covered in blood. What the fuck is going on? Where is everyone else? I don't know if he is hurt or someone else is. Please, someone respond. Don't follow Emma through there just yet. There are two collectibles in this little sort of confusing hatch part. Um, one with uh, RUS03 on it and one with RUS02 on it. And it's actually just above you. 
So this is what I mean by the potential confusion. So if you just flick up then, there is the Toru data log. So pick that one up then, that's collectible 60, and then turn just directly around. Again, it can be disorientating, but you should be fine. There's a laptop next to the door of RUS02. Then from that little hatch, just go into the room that Emma went, and there is another collectible on the floor. This one is very easy to miss if you just keep flying through. So go in there, have a look on the floor, and it's SLGC Emergency. Another audio log. Oh my god, doesn't it look like she's got a boner? There. Look, look, she got a boner! She got a little boner! She's gonna bum whoever the assailant is. <laughs> uh, anyway, go into the room that she went. There's another laptop floating in midair right there. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Storm on Saturn. So now press start, go into your memory core. We're gonna be taking a look. At, uh, we're going to do some combination datering, and it'll be for Space Captain Slow May Morgan's bio now. Emma, 
He says he can see noise and words in his vision. He keeps saying bring her over and over again. He's fucking lost it. Okay. Okay. Sam, go look for Josh. I'll wait here with Jim until we get pressurized. We had a station-wide blackout and then here we are. Sam didn't come back online, but we managed to get through some of the hatch doors to meet Central. We got the EFR online. So you're probably thinking to yourself, what in the dick and balls and hairy goddamn ass is that? Um, yeah, yeah, the only, the only way you'll get any answers is if you've been reading all the data logs and audio data and things like that, because it's just <laughs> absolutely bizarre. Because on the original space station, Jim Elias was dead, and I was on an outlet station alive. Weird, weird. But anyway, we need to be finding a few hatches, so there's only one way we can go through at the minute. Um, again, some of the collectibles that we did get, you can get right now, but I just thought it was easier to grab them all, pick them all up in uh, just one sort of fell swoop, as it were. So you can take a little look around if you want, but there's only really one way to go, as you can see there. So you can, so you can grab collectibles from the point we just came past, but it's so much easier to do it the way I just did. Um, so we will be going through this little bit of hatch control now, get Emma to open this one up for you. You one has been recently closed. It might have something to do with the power being redirected to RU6. Or it could be something else. Be careful. This part is very important as well. Do not go... There's only one way you think you can go, and that's up. But do not go down there yet. Have a look below you and see the hatch for UN05 or UN5. Get Emma to open that one up, and there is a collectible through there. That one is very, very easily missable. And again, it's one of them that you might miss if you go too far into the story on this alternate station. So make sure to open up this UN5 door. Go straight through to the left, and there is a laptop. Well, you can sort of see it if you sort of spin yourself around right there. Or, or is it above you, or below you? Or It's in this room anyway. There it is. It's in this room anyway. Swiftly before we move on then, go into your memory core, uh, get some combination data in, we're going to get Jim Elias' Bionase up next. You know what's funny? It actually took me like 10 minutes to try and figure out where the hell to go to get out of here. But you just go straight ahead and then to the right. And that's it. And that's how you get out. But I kept missing this door for some reason. And I was getting a bit panicky. And pretty pissed off. So this is the Universal Central Ring right now. And we will actually be in contact with a surprising guest in just a moment. Um, it's pretty annoying to find because, again, it, it takes a second to figure out if you're upside down or not <laughs> until you have a look at the writing on the door, um, which that's the only way you know. And it's not down there, but it is actually straight up into this hole, the UC1 and O2 hatch, which we actually need to be getting through there. Jim's not happy about it, but Emma is, so that's where we're going next. But again, like I said, it, it can be a bit disorientating now and again, but... You'll be fine. You'll be fine. Also, before you actually go into this hatch, make sure that you have collected collectible uh, 58, which is data drop 5, and collectible 65, which is data drop 11. Because if you go into this bit, do what you got to do in here, those memories will not be available anymore. So make sure to grab those two collectibles before you do this. 
But once we do get in here, there is a little surprise. It's not down there. You can just see someone there. Who the hell is that? Make sure to go up to them. Take a little look at them. Uh, press left trigger and A to respond. And holy crap, it's Emma! We get an achievement, but Jesus, Magoni, God damn it, diddly, flanderino, shit balls. So alternate Emma's dead, and this just confuses, I mean, this just makes things way more complicated than it needs to be. But, god damn. Now the chills are starting to happen. And now you can have a little chat with your alter ego, Sam. Just, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just copy exactly as I do, um, pick the same ones that I do, and it'll take, it'll last a couple of minutes, this bit. All core functions are disabled. There is insufficient power to enable service. What is your SAM online status? I am here. What is your primary mission status? Jim Elias, Emma Fisher, deceased. Elsie Young, deceased. Stanislav Leonov, deceased. Josh Ramon, May Morgan, deceased. Primary mission status is inactive. Previous mission logs are now available. Display. Authentication required. Precursor 1. Access granted. What is Precursor 1? Precursor 1. Mission Director William Stafford. Program Captain Jim Elias. What is Sam's role? Initial discovery of three patterns in standard Kepler data set. What is pattern one? There are 23 pairs of identical transit light curves from different stars within our galaxy. This is statistically impossible. Each pair linked showed converging connecting vector lines at one point in space, hereby known as the event marker. Close to Earth's position, approximately four years from signal discovery, this pattern was labeled where and when. What is pattern two? On inspection of the 46 light curves discovered in pattern one, each transit graph contained a spike. This occurred at exactly the same point in time for each. This was labeled Sink point. What is pattern three? Overlaying each of these light curves on the sink point creates a new pattern of sequential light curve troughs. There was deeper detail in the light curves themselves. When analyzed, they show a perfect description of the human genome. Each of the 23 pairs of identical patterns shows each chromosome in mankind's DNA code. This was labeled who? What was the crew mission? 
There was no active progression. What was the captain's mission? Precursor 1 had one objective. Approach event marker at where and when, with who, and observe. Warning. Structural integrity failing. Power levels insufficient. 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 Holy crap then, is basically what I'm getting from that. So now we're starting to unravel more of the mystery as to what the hell's going on. Very important here, make sure to go back into the main room, turn around, go into the room which says um, UN 1, 2 and 7. And there is a collectible in here. This is the only time you can get this collectible, so make sure to grab it before you go, otherwise you'll have to start all over again. And we don't want that. But the door was locked before, which is why we couldn't get it before either. So, now we'll go back into our memory core, do some more combination data ring for Josh, the old ramen noodle bio. Immediately. What the hell is quantum comms? You get me on your station, and I'll show you. I guess we head back to our... Uh, my station. And that should now be all of the collectibles on this alternate station, so now we can go and try to find Josh. But before we do, again, make sure to be grabbing collectibles 61, 63, 62, 59 and 60 before we go and find Josh. Again, if you go ahead and you haven't got 60 out of the 68 collectibles, like I said in the other one, just take a look at your data drop, see which ones you're missing, and then go from there. But as long as you've got 68, out of 85, we can now go ahead and find Josh, and we do that by just going straight forward. Um, go to the right. I was looking at the left, but you're actually going to the right. And then have a look up and go through that room, and this is where we find Mr. Ramen. Sam, you got a cross. Did Emma make it? I knew, Sam. They put us up here, knowing something would happen. Not what, but... There was a message in the fucking stars. You found it, Sam. It told them where to be and when, and they put us up here like bait or something. All of us. Listen, Sam. I'm injured. Coming here was a mistake. You need to find Emma and get us back to our own station. The fusion reactor on this version is unstable. Everything here is unstable. The reactor, Sam, Jim. He attacked me the moment I got inside. And I wasn't the first to piss him off. Sam. Get Emma. Get us out of here. And stay away from Jim. No. We want trouble, Mayor. Wait, Jim! Someone is there, he found someone. It's just a suit, let's go. But Josh? Josh is gone. What? Jim, hurry up. We're going to... Here we go. Oh my god. Oh shit.
By the way, watching the station float into space there, it takes about a minute and a half for some reason, but I edited it down for time because I thought my game had actually broke. But your game's not broke, it just takes a goddamn while to carry on. So then, who knew the weird, disgusting looking sex pervert was the bad guy all along? What a dick. So we will be, um, yeah, so sadly, Josh has been left to die. Emma's love of her life. Biff, look at him. I bet you got weird old wrinkly balls as well, haven't you, you prick? So, we'll have to be doing some voice authentication in. Again, you can accept it if you really want to, but we've been told not to trust him, and I find I find that good. So, we're going to be rejecting it. Again, I don't think the gameplay would differ too much if you do accept it, but... Hey, you know, it's up to you. It doesn't affect any achievements anyway, just, just the, your story and gameplay, I assume. But I'm rejecting it, because I'm a nice guy. Elias, one nine nine two four eight. Oh, come on. System override. Verify authorization. Delta four four nine one. Bypass authentication. The hell, Sam. System override. to me awake then. Well, look at you. Barely any system links activated. Orbital corrections. Gathering personal audio logs. <laughs> You're a nosy bastard, aren't you? You know, this is probably for the best. You're a mess. One down. Okay, that's two. Three. Should have done this right away. Done. Time to go. So he's trying to sever all our links so he doesn't, so we can't actually uh, see him do all his dodgy, dirty dealings and, you know, space masturbation. Freak. Um, anyway. So you'll just um, copy the exact same links that I do, press and hold the A button on the same ones that I do, and that'll sort of override it, and we can get a few of our links back here. So we can save the day. Sam Fisher style. Get it? Emma Fisher? Sam? Sam Fisher? The link? The, the Splinter Cell? Yeah, I tried, I tried, I've tried so hard not to make that link throughout the entire game, but I felt it was a very um, prominent point to do it at. So when we are sort of back in the room and we're uh, not all fudged up, have a look at the laptop directly up and to the left of you, and there are three collectibles here to grab. I've kept it in my bunk so Jim doesn't shut us down, but I have this fear boost moving almost instantly. It's amazing and very dangerous. A bit of pressure build up and then it propels a few feet super fast and comes to a dead stop. I love it. It could be useful to clear debris or allow the sphere to... And then head... Back into your memory core, we'll be getting the experimental firmware flash log with a bit of combination detouring. Don't tell Jim.
and stay in it we'll be doing a little bit more now for the loss of the RU arm and uh, there's going to be one more after this as well actually so we've basically just got six collectibles there in not too much time at all I'm coming close to the end now Right then, so now that we've got the six collectibles from there, we should have 11 left to go now. But now we are on the search for Jim Elias. So to use your boost, press and hold the right trigger button, stay as sort of away from the door for a minute, and then you'll sort of boost it open. So it's a little bit of boosting. Uh, go to the left, don't go to the right. I think there's only really one path that you can take, to be honest. As long as you're not getting stuck on walls or <laughs> door handles or frames or anything. So we'll just nip straight on through and then to the right again. Because as I said, that's the only door that's open at the minute. So we are trying to um, beat the crap now out of Big Jim. You could just see... Um, well, I don't know. Could That could be alternate Jim, the dead guy right there. The, the original Jim Elias, who's dead. We don't know if he's the alternate one or if he's the original one, do we? But turn your ass around and there's a vent on the left hand side, again give that a boost, press and hold the right trigger, make sure you're a little bit away from it, and then BAM! That would hurt on, uh, well, I, th I suppose that would hurt anyone really if you're chucking a sphere at someone's head. Uh, nip through the vent here, keep on nipping through, do the same thing, don't get too close to the vent, and then bash that open, and then we'll just nip out to the left, we will come out of uh, RUS 03, and then Jim will basically shut us down again. Ugh, come on man, you're just delaying the inevitable. So we're having to sort of override his overriding systems there and do the same thing we've done earlier. Again, cop the same ones I do and we can uh, get back into it. <laughs> get back into saving the world, Emma Sam Fisher style. So from here then we're going to wake up now in the CNO2 arm, um, there's going to be a long conversation with um, Jim Elias to Space Control and there is another collectible, there's the 75th out of 85 collectibles in here, but the reason it takes so bloody long, it's only a laptop but you've got to turn it on, but the power caddy was extremely, extremely finicky and I was sort of upside down and a bit uh, confused at this point until I realized what the hell was going on. <laughs> there it is, it happens so much. So you pair it up and the power caddy is literally only to the right of it, but it was so finicky, you have to be, I don't know if it'll be like it for you guys, but I had to be in like a certain spot to be able to turn it on, which is why it took me so long. Nothing came back online. It could be power, but whatever it appears needs to sway above my head. Please stand by. Okay, I need to talk to Bill. William Stafford, where is he? This is Bill. 
There we go then, you finally get it into the right spot. You know, I mean that is a long conversation, I've got to be honest, I was listening to the conversation as well. So it's <laughs> kind of hard to concentrate, but when you turn on the power caddy, finally, so apologies if that was sort of 30 seconds wasted for you, my bad on that one. Uh, but yeah, go ahead then, get the collectible, and for the next collectible we'll be doing some data combination in as well. Uh, and that will be the Ailsa Yang bio. Help me understand what's going on with the captain. I have to keep requesting orientation resets, but he seems so stressed. I'm almost too frightened to ask. What is he working on? Message ends. So I know it took me a while to get that 75th collectible, but you can't actually progress with the story until Jim had finished talking to Space Control anyway, so it wasn't really too much time wasted, although it did look like so. But now we can actually get out of the Chinese arm, and now we are actually going to be looking for Jim Elias now. There's no way he can uh, mess us up now. Again, it's only really one way. But for some reason, this part confused the crap out of me. So I'm at the link B door, and the way to go is literally if you just turn around from here and just go straight, you're there. Um, but it kind of looks like a dead end, as you'll see in just a second. So I thought there was some other door to go through or something right here, but literally, all you go in just up over here, down, and for some reason I thought this was a dead end, so I actually came down here once and then pissed off back the other way. When <laughs> it wasn't, so, yeah. Yeah, again, you know, I do apologise if you sort of think, Christ, you know, you could have literally just gone straight for it. But I'd done it, I'd done it the once, went to do it again, and it just got bloody confusing, as did this room as well. So we're looking for the vent, we finally found the vent. And that knocks us to six, apparently, as well. Uh, again, just have a little nip through, um... I think I was kind of in a rage at this point. <laughs> That's why my driving is awful. Come on! Get it there, you dick! But we are finally at the end. Finally. Vent it up. Try not to, you know, try not to be a moron like I was just then and completely miss it. Now then, if you turn around, we will be seeing Jim Elias. But we'll be going into the universe, uh, the UC01 and O2 hatch. He can spot you, so be very, very careful. Try and be sneaky, and then go straight up to it. He actually catches me here. How many of these things do I need to shut down? So there we go. So he, he, there, there is a point where you might not be able to be seen, as long as you're careful, and when he's turned his back elsewhere, then you can sort of um, go up to the UC hatch and... Do it a little bit quicker than I did. I got caught. But I've left this bit in just to show you what happens if you do get caught. So it's the top right-hand corner. These are the ones that you've got to be doing. Um, there's not as many of these little uh, points as there are. I just sort of clicked through everything. I was a bit unhappy at this point, to be honest. <laughs> it, was doing, it was doing my tits in. But we do finally make it. Eventually, there it is. So hopefully now this should be the last time. Right, so when we start back up, we start back up in UN06. And you might think, well, that's a bit of a pain in the ass. But it's really not at all, to be honest. So all we've got to do then is find another vent to go through in here. And it's just, just to the left of me right here. It's just on the floor. There it is. So again, you know, like I said, it can literally depend on sort of if you're upside down. I mean, it, it'll mess up your whole vision. For me, Jim Elias was not here at this point, so I was able to... I'm not sure if he will be there for you guys again if you do get caught. I'm really, really not sure, I'm afraid. 
Because like I said, as soon as I get in here, there is nobody in here. So, you know, whether he catches you once and then this happens for all you guys, I really hope so. Because otherwise that is a bit of a pain in the ass. But the UL, oh, the, the U02 hatch, I can't even remember whatever it's bloody called, will already be open, of course, so we will be talking to Sam. And now we can actually finally gain back access to the cameras. And we will actually be talking now to Space Control as well as they try to figure out what's going on. And if they really want to bring Jim home. I'm here. Shit. We're receiving a response from Sam. Please stand by. Sam, this is William Stafford from Ground Control at Houston. Authenticate. Precursor 1. Sam, we're in the middle of a conversation with Captain Jim Elias. However, from Emma's previous message, we were to believe Jim was dead. I need Jim's crew tracker report, please. The tracker for Jim Elias is online. Report on any location or vitals data, please. Captain Jim Elias has expired. That doesn't make any sense, Sam. We're talking to him right now. Where is he? The captain is located in both RU-6 and UC-1. Sam, get me a visual feed on Jim. Show me him. Captain Jim Elias is located in RUS-6. Huh. We've received live feed from Sam in RU-6, where you appear to be. No, I'm in UC-1 at comms. What do you mean? Bill, I'm in UC-1. I'm on comms. It must be all data. Where is Emma, Jim? Emma is... She's gone. She's at a comms range to know for sure, but... Stand by. What about Emma, Sam? She hasn't broadcast again. What is her status? Emma Fisher's tracker is online. Vitals and location, Sam. Emma Fisher has a low heart rate and is in critical condition. Can you help? Okay, what's her current location, Sam? The location of Emma Fisher is currently unknown. Okay. Hang tight, Sam. Sam, I'm going to authorize a command security protocol. So then, while Jim is pondering, is he really dead? Is he alive? Who's alternate and who's not? Uh, as we're doing this with Emma right here and still talking to Space Control, we get an incoming message. So go to communications on the very left-hand side, click on the incoming, and then click on the third one, the uh, command withdrawal protocol, which will get you the command terminal schematic. Uh, this one's automatic, so you cannot miss this. Meet, me meet you bloody halfway. It's not like it's a drive from Wales to bloody Scotland, is it? And we meet up in the middle. Jesus, man. <laughs> anyway, we're going back into the um, UC02 room now. Get the link jettison controls all streamed and online because we'll be needing to uh, do a few things for uh, space control. What changed? You wanted me to get the crew to the marker and leave. I could continue the mission from the ground. I did that. I got them there. On time. Fuck, if you're worried about me going mad on the way home, you're a bit too fucking late for that. Uh, sorry, I lied. It's actually not available at the minute, but we will be coming back to that in a bit later on. So go to the command terminal now. We'll be looking at the circuit board, and there's a few uh, little things that we have to be doing and sort of taking out. And the first one then, if you go to the left, all the way to the left, you'll see a code uh, just down a little bit called E43. So on the board on the right, click E43, click 2, click validate. And that is gamma um, deleted and out of the way. Go to the right a little bit, you will see the code D76. So pick that and then pick number 6. And then validate again. Oh, 5, sorry. Pick number 5, my bad. And to the right and up just a little bit, you'll see H62. So click that, click number 9, validate again, and that will get rid of beta, gamma, and alpha, which I believe. 
Data stream is showing that's been carried out successfully. Good. Cut the line. We can't do this. Bill, wait. We can't provide any emergency authorization at this time. And I bet you thought that the uh, hexagon entity forgot about you, didn't you? Uh-uh. No, 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 no. So this is the third out of four hexagon entities. Again, it's exactly the same as it'll be on screen for you guys. So just copy exactly what I do. And again, if you do end up missing out, you should be able to replay it. I don't think it will have avoid the achievement, as I've seen a few people say that. So just copy what I do, and once again, you should be fine, my beautiful friends. Holy crap balls! So the the Hezgon entity is not exactly happy with Jim, wants us to kill him, which, you know, I'm fine with, to be honest. Uh, I think we're all happy with that. Um, we've only got one Hexagon entity left. That'll be at the very end of the game, so we will get that. So don't think that you've missed it one out or anything like that. So all we're doing then, we're doing the same exact uh, hatch controls for each one. So we will get the pairing going. going. Get the system link online, do the schematic for it, because we'll be closing and then locking the doors. So it's just to say there's three doors in here. The three are exactly the same all the time to be able to uh, close and lock it. Sam, come on, man.
do this. I, I, I and then so once well. the doors are locked, go, go back to camera B on the left-hand side, go to the life control terminal right there, and the code is 140412. Now, the way you'd get it is uh, numbers in red will start showing up right there, and you've got to sort of figure it out from there. But, you know, it's I'll, I'll just tell you. It's just easier that way, isn't it? So, 140412. Click toggle, click emergency flush, and that's goodbye, weird sex pervert man. Oh, and an achievement. Worst punches I've ever seen anyone throw. Uh, then again, I suppose if you're sort of lacking of breath and only going to die in a couple of seconds, I suppose you're not. <laughs> your concentration levels are not going to be all that great. So click the start, um, toggle your waypoint, and go to. We'll be going to EAS 11 to basically let Emma in, because well, she must be a bit nippy and a bit sort of unbreathy outside by now. So that's where we'll be heading on, and again, we'll be getting a few collectibles on our way, so we'll just sort of nip past Jim, if we can... Oh! Could you... Excuse me, mate, could you get your balls out my face? Could you just... Move your goddamn penis out the way. Squeeze past that fat head. And there we go, now we can have a nice little relaxing sort of way up to EAS 11. But with it being extremely dark and the sort of black tendrils all over the place, once again, this will get a little bit disorientating and confusing, but if I edit somewhere, etc., I'll obviously try to uh, explain the best I can where we are and where we're going. So always look for the waypoint. So this next bit is kind of... It, it did kind of feature the crap out of me as well. So when we get to this door, head left, and you'll see these two flags right here. I started going to the right and edited it out. Basically, the waypoint, though, is just, just above where those two flags were, so it... It's not in here, UN07. This bit, again, it just sort of... Because it's so dark and everything like that. So go to the other side of where the flags are. And then you'll just see the waypoint just up above there. I know that really wasn't edited the best, and I do apologise again for that. But that bit really did confuse the crap out of me. But now we are, we are in EAS03. And this is where we'll be getting another achievement and another two collectibles. So from this point, there's nothing in this um, this locker right here. And it can be kind of tricky to miss again. Especially if you're upside down right there. Um, but it's not that one. So we'll just back out of there. And then if we just turn around. Completely turn around. There it is. So, so from that first locker, just immediately turn around. We will get collectible 78 and 79, which is a picture of Josh and Emma. And we will also get the laptop error message, which will also get this, the searching the bunks achievement as well. So again, quite confusing, these parts. But, you know, we always get there in the end, don't we?
and now we will be getting a few more uh, combination data. So the first one then is for the uh, loss EAS arm. You could do it in literally any order. There's three to get here. You can do it in any order. That's exactly the way I did it, to be honest. So grab this one first then. Next up for me was the Emma Fisher Bio, and then, like I said, we'll do one more combination data after this, and then we've only got three collectibles left, and we're nearing the end of the game too. And collectible 82 is another combination data called the crew. Now, to me, what it looks like is the guys and the gals that worked on the game, which I thought was a very, very nice touch, if that is the case. I don't want to say it is, and I don't want to say it isn't, but that's what it looks like to me. Sounds See? Hey, everyone. Hello. And now then, from this point, it's a it's an easier time of getting to EAS 11 and the airlock to let Emma in. And then we'll just watch the ensuing cutscene, we'll do a few more things, and then we'll be on our way to the tiddy and nipple-looking planet Saturn. Oh, it's all coming together now. All the brainwashed and stuff. I don't know what the hell happened there, I've done a little Formula 1 type spin, for some reason. J um... Okay, it's supposed to be easy. There we go. But there is a door just on the right there. Again, little things you sort of miss, which is annoying. Right, we're almost there now. So again, once we do the uh, airlock hatch, then we should be golden nuggets. I could feel everything when I was in that airlock. I felt it when Jim was attacking your mainframe. I felt your pain. I know why you brought me here. I know you've been moving the station closer and closer to the storm. I don't know if you realize it or not. It's time. You have to take us there. Did you see Saturn's nipples staring straight at you? Might get a bit uncomfortable, you don't know where to look. It's like you're a baby and you're getting the milk out of Saturn again, innit? Or some weird other analogy. Anyway, uh, let's just go to RUS04. And God, I bet, uh, go to the far data field this time. And I was going to say, I bet Emma's feeling a bit relieved after almost not breathing for a while. And all you got to do, just go straight up. We're looking for the coordinates now of Earth. So go up. You sort of see these little black lines. And it's just directly under this one here. And again, we'll be doing the same thing we did earlier. So we'll be inputting those codes first. 
So again, then we'll start, uh, press the start button, go over to communications, or go to UC01 first, but we will be needing to put input those <laughs> coordinations now. Go into broadcast, and again, as you see, just on the right hand side there, 838 24, 32 14 12, put them in. Put them in now! This is Emma Fisher, on board Observation. We are in orbit around Saturn. So just while Emma's talking, uh, you can't actually do anything, that's why I'm just having a look and seeing if the uh, Link Jettison is online in UC02 at the minute. It's just, like I said, just while we're talking, we can't actually do anything until she tells us to do something. So it's always worth a check, but we will be getting that collectible ever so shortly. We've changed. Sam is capable of so much in so many ways. And I, I don't know what is happening to me, but I know I'll never be the same again. Everyone else is dead. I've started a broadcast of all black box data from Sam. And I hope you can put this together in a way that makes sense and that it wasn't all for nothing. Broadcast as long as we are able. The alarm. The so press the start menu then, go over to your station alerts. And station orbit trajectory is unsafe. Ready. So it's not looking good for us at the minute, but we needed to figure it out. So now we can go to the terminal there on the left. So go ahead and do that. Now this these numbers are random for everybody. Uh, it, it, it's not hard by any stretch of the imagination at all so click calculator orbit uh, select number two and you'll get these numbers on the right hand side here which we need to go to the next page to put in they're all random but easiest way I found write them all down this just instead of having to go back and forth all the time just write all these numbers down and then go over to the next page and all we're doing then is adjusting it to the number which it said on the previous page so the AFT was 37 for me the FWD was 87 STB 23 etc so like I said I'm pretty sure they will be random for all of you but make it a little bit easier write them all down and pop them all in So just where it says engage burn there, you have to get it dead on the same second. So for me it was 8, so I'll start it up, and then as soon as it hits 8, I will uh, stop it. So it's like a stopwatch, basically. And again, it'll be all different for you, so... It doesn't matter if you fail, you just have to input all the numbers again. But you shouldn't have too much of an issue, the time goes quite slowly there as well. And, well, here we go! Go. The alignment is off. The station is under too much stress. We'll lose stability and explode on entry. Ah, nutsack. Sorry, we're not go just yet. Lol, I look like a loser. So now we can actually go to uh, <laughs> collectible uh, UCO2. To finally get that link jettison online, it was all story related anyway, so I don't know why I was checking it earlier on. I'm sorry, the, my sort of gameplay on this part of the station hasn't been the best, so my bad for that, honestly. So we've got to do the jettison procedure. This is extremely, extremely easy, but it does count as a collectible. So as soon as we do this, then we'll do the other two combination datas, and then we will get the achievement. So what we're doing is just copying the, well, procedure manual exactly as it is on the right-hand side. Simples, mate.
look you see one dark completely and see ourselves in here. You'll have to do this for us, sir. So now we are ready to go, but make sure you do and uh, as Emma says, if you've got anything left to do, do it now, and that's what we'll be doing. So to the memory core. We will be getting the first one out of two data collectibles to get the achievement. The first one that I put up right here is the loss on the UN arm. Do this last combination data and finally, 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 we are done. And that was definitely one of the most confusing-ish games for collectibles that I have done. It did take a while to sort of put them in an order, which I thought was the quickest way I could get around it without having to backtrack and go here, there and pissing everywhere. But, you know, hopefully you guys would have got this achievement by now and I hope that this collectible guide... Or, well, it's a 100% guide, but hopefully the way I've done the collectibles has helped you out big time. Because it did take a bit of work, <laughs> I'll be honest. So we've got two achievements left now. Basically, one for finishing the game, and the other one is for getting the final uh, hexagon entity completely right. Which, again, like I said, is at the end of the game. So now, it's just a case of, you know, trying to find out where you are first. <laughs> And we've only got three things left to do, and then we'll be on our way to the uh, big old titty planet, Saturn. But first off then, go down to where it said UN123. At the very end, you will see these sort of explosive bolts. Um, they're not explosive, you should be fine really, but you'll pair it up. There we go then, just hold a... And it'll sort of pop off, there we go. Now we have to go to the very end where we will be doing, if you remember, the um, clamp detachments, which could have been a little bit of a pain in the ass, where you get 10 seconds and you sort of got to... Well, you know, you'll see exactly how it goes now. So just press A to do it, and you've obviously got to be quite quick. I don't know why I just didn't do anything there. And remember, you've got to press A every time to detach it as well. And then it's basically, this is what we're doing. We Then we go into the next room on your right doing the exact same thing. Then the next room on your right and doing the, the exact same thing. And then we'll be done.
back to UC1. Oh my god, I feel so heavy. We made it. We made it. Sam. Sam, are you still with me? Well, shit, you made it. Isn't that just fantastic? Now, this is basically one long, long cutscene. Uh, you'll have to sort of interact with a few objects as you pass by with the A button. But literally, there's, there's nothing else for us to do. Now, we've got the last hexagon entity coming up, of course. So don't think it's all done and dusted just yet. But for now, just enjoy what Saturn looks like or supposedly looks like. I thought it was a big titty. I don't see no milk, do you? Nah. Tamping. Gutting. So just enjoy. I'm not, I am going to stop talking now. Enjoy the cutscenes. Uh, like I said, keep an eye out because you'll have to press the A button a couple of times, but that is it.
Emma, there's someone there. It's one of the others. It didn't work for her. are trying. How many are there? It's so sad. So few will make it. There it is. That's where we're going, Sam. I've seen it. So here we go then, the final hexagon entity is exactly the same as it will be for you guys as well, so there's no randomness here. Again, if you do make a mistake, you can replay it, and once again, I'll just let you know again that it shouldn't void the achievement. But as long as you got the other three all correct with no mistakes as well, you will unlock an achievement for getting all the hexagon entities correct in one swoop. So just enjoy this. I'm really 
here with you, aren't I? How do you feel, Sam? Different. New. <sighs> I've never felt that before. ending that was now that just just gave me a uh, prototype feels didn't it god i do hope there's a second one good good god i really hope there's a second one that game was just phenomenal from start to finish collecting those were a bit of a pain in the ass to be honest but um in terms of story absolutely everyone involved in this game should give themselves a big round of applause because that was incredible but that is that then guys and gals i really really hope that you did enjoy the game and especially the guide because you know you know as fun as it was obviously it took a while to put together but all I'm happy with is as long as it's a good guide it's straightforward straight to the point that you guys don't have to be messing around so I tried to do it as best I could for you and hopefully it worked out and you know once again hopefully we've had a few laughs along the way because once again I've lost my bloody head um, but as I said, that is that then, guys and gals. You know, you can, you can always catch me on my little socials. Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, Patreon, I'm on as well. All I can say is, please let there be an observation too, because once again, this was phenomenal. Absolutely phenomenal. And a game on Saturn wouldn't be too bad, would it? Uh, but, like I said, that is that then, guys and gals. Thank you so, so much for watching. You know, like, comment, and subscribe if this video... Um, give you any help whatsoever and I shall see you in the next one. Big love!